Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Wood, folks, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day at Ord, O-R-D, hyphen, oracle.com. That's Ord, hyphen, oracle.com. Tim Wood, what's going on, brother? Well, we got actually... Um some actually some bully stuff going on. Let's let's take a look at it. We'll okay. start with chart one, and okay. this is just kind of a review. Just keep in mind whatever what's what's kind of currently going on. But yes. you know it's yeah chart number one is that Zwag breath thrust indicator ZBT you call it uh, abbreviated yep. slow. But anyhow, we got a a bullish. Uh, yeah, I guess a bullish buy signal on this indicator. Uh, in a nutshell, this indicator has to go from 0.4 to 0.6 in 10 days, which it did, and finish that bullish setup on August or yeah, August 19th. And so it's been consolidating back, but these ZBTs only show up in bull markets. Uh, going back to 2022, part, part of 2023, three of them came in that bottom formation, Suggesting yes. that, that that wasn't a halfway point, but moved down. But it's actually the market was basing, and it turned out to be true. We got a, a rally out of that base, and so I'm looking for another rally here to start. Let's, let's take a look at chart two. This is pretty interesting. Now I think you okay. brought it up uh, on the VIX uh, going into that low uh, of uh, yes. first of August. You remember how fast that VIX went up? Yes, I do. Uh, yes. Yeah, we kind of talked about it a little bit. And it says, well, the velocity of the VIX is actually a good indicator. And so the faster that VIX goes to a higher price, the more closer, I'll put it that way, you're closer to a low. So the more, because VIX is a fear indicator, fear is another yes. word for panic. Uh, so, but anyhow, yeah. you know, I'll describe the, the pattern. You know, the bottom one is, is the uh, SPX. Next window up, is the three period rate of change of the VIX. So okay. it's kind of a moving average of, of over a three day period how fast the VIX moves. And anyhow, I got a couple of lines on there. We're at around 24 right now, um, or we hit 24. And those three red lines across the three bright red li lines across the chart, this chart goes back. Uh, a couple of years are the times when this rate of change of the VIX hit 24 or higher. At that, okay. at the uh, August low, we we got to. Have, it's hard to see there. I think we got up around the 30s. We're around 24 right now. So we we yeah. We, well, uh, on the August on the August low, we got to 65. Yesterday we got to 23.31, and it's 19.90 right, now. Yeah. Right, but I'm taking a three-day average. Oh, cool. I got it. Okay, got it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, right. yes, So I got it's it. over okay. a three-day yep. period. So For it's sure. a rate of yep. change on three days. So in other right. words, it has to be consistently high for three days. Yes. You know, one day sometimes can be a anomaly. It doesn't really mean a whole lot. But if you get three right. days, it means quite a bit more. So if yes. we're up around, we did hit around 24, and the last time that three-day I forget what it was, but it's in the 30s. I know it went higher than that, but the three-day average was, you know, high 20s, low 30s. Back at right. uh, the uh, March low of 2023, it got up around 24, and there's another uh, one in June of 2022. It got up around 24. All the rest of them uh, got around 20 or, la or 20 to 22. That's a kind of a shaded area across there. They could mean minor lows. Sometimes they come at major lows. Well, you get up past 24, you're looking at a low pretty close to right now. So, okay. let's, let's see where we are. On, uh, oh, uh, all right, yeah, let's just go to chart three. Okay, I have it. Yep. All right, this is the SPX tilt ratio. We brought it up uh, the other day. Yes. This, this is an indicator actually works a lot better at bottoms than the tops. And the last okay. one we had came at the uh, um, the low of August. It was got like, uh, you know, the SPX tilt ratio, I take an RSI of it. It gets below 30. In other words, that's when the um, SPX is plummeting towards 
I forget how you get the RSI down. But anyhow, that's not really important. As long as the RSI gets 30 or below, and actually the more below 30 it is, the more bullish it becomes because the rubber bands stretch too much. And so okay. that freaked out that low pretty pretty good. I noticed that's one of the reasons why I'm long on that market on that day. Yes. We're almost back down there to 30 right now. So uh, if we keep plunging here, that's going to hit 30 here pretty quick. We're at 35 right now. So the downside, according to this indicator, is probably pretty minimal. I mean, if it's saying around 50 or so, you know, it's not really good. You know, it's not really a good sign, but it gets down close to 30 where we are right now. It tells me that it's a limited downside tire. It will probably not going to go down to the August lows. Uh, so, okay. uh, you know, uh, this indicator, Tim, did pick out the last couple of highs, though. I mean, yeah, this is one of the first yeah, indicators that turned on you. Yeah. Yeah, but you're exactly right. But uh, sometimes, um, if it gets way up there above 70, it's a real good indicator. But if it just hits 70, it does a fair job. It, but cool. It, yeah, just stay right there. Down, it seems to work a lot better. But it's both, both, it's both good ways. Oh, I get it. I hear the music. I get it. So. That's it. It's a beautiful thing. You stay right there, man. We have the Dow. The Dow's on 50. Uh, that's all. The Nasdaq's on 26. He's off 21. Tim and I are coming right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Boyd, Tom O'Brien, we do appreciate your corral and a problem on us out here. We have the down to uh, 29. NASDAQ is up 37. That's the piece. We're off 16 and a half. And uh, when we were talking about, when Tim and I were talking about the VIX, folks, okay, I uh, we had a couple questions, Tim, in the Dan and on the, the listener line. Uh, sure. He's doing the three-day average. That's I, I of the VIX. That's what's going on, not the highs and the lows. The, the, the no, questions right. were... Yeah, you, you yeah. want to you want to consistently, you, know, you get one day high VIX, doesn't mean a lot. You get two days, that means more. Yes. You get three days, means more. But, you know, when panic hits, it doesn't, like, take forever. You know, panic hits, it's right. over in a hurry. So, yeah. a 10-day no, no, VIX good. is really useless, because this yeah. oh, panic's going to happen in probably the first three, four days, or two days. If you know right. what I mean. No, I, I, so, no, I do. No, and I appreciate you explaining that. It's awesome, man. Totally. Okay, yeah, so we're well, on uh, chat three right now, I think, right? Yeah, three. Oh, uh, yes. All uh, right, Smith Crease here. That's, um, so, anyhow, so we got we got panic on the VIX, which is a fear gauge, and you got three days yeah. is really pretty high. And the last few times, you hit a low. Let's go to chart four. See where okay. we are. Okay, I have it. All right, so uh, currently we're testing the gap of, uh, which is that I got a gap. We're getting to that gap of August uh, 15th. We're testing yes. that gap on lighter volume. Gap, gaps are support if you test that gap on 10% or lighter volume, and we're going to do that today. If you look down to the volume chart, you can see the volume came in by a volume. It looks like probably 55, 60 million. We're not going to reach yes. that today. Um, right. So we're going to see support at that gap. And if you remember, the the three ROC of the VIX is already, already hit 24. That suggests, yes. you know, it really got panic in the market, even though the trend, uh, I got the trend reading there also of not today, but yesterday we hit 1.38 on a close. Day before, 1. or 1.38 yesterday, day before, 1.3. Okay. So we're starting to see panic. And the trends also, we got a trend right now of uh, like 1.2, which is decent. So chances are we're going to find support at that gap. Now, I get it. Yep. All the best, all all the best days to trade are Fridays. Thursday oh, yeah. is, which is today, which sometimes the market will just stay weak until Friday. Sometimes it doesn't. So what I'm leading up, you know, the worst case scenario, we may close the gap, but. What I'm thinking about is going along on tonight's close. Now, the, the, we may have enough uh, panic in the market. The more panic you have in the market, the more bullish outcome it is. So if you get a little bit of panic, right. you get a little big bounce. If you get more panic, you get a bigger bounce. If you get the whole yes. market blown to pieces, you know, you got a major bottom. Uh, You're really so, in business. Yeah, right. So, you know, that's how it works. That's when people are calling me up on panic. I mean, yes. yeah, they're calling me. You know, 
then they're really panicking. That's usually oh, a that's sign. a good sign. So, exactly. I, <laughs> so yeah, you're thinking so, of going long tonight instead of waiting going long tomorrow night, right? Pardon? You're thinking of going long tonight versus tomorrow night that it might close the gap. Are you going long tonight right. and you figure it can close the gap and come right back tomorrow? Yeah, if it goes, it's because I have enough information here with the VIX, right. with the trend, with the volume studies, to just at a minimum we should get to the gap on Monday. You know, Monday's gap, uh, we gap down on Monday. Okay, so, yeah. It's, it's you know, and maybe we bust through it. Depends how you know if we got strong volume coming off this you know potential bottom, and we yes. see volume really pick up, uh, then uh, you know may may go up higher. But on a short term basis, you know you, you got the VIX, you got the uh, SPX tilt ratio almost to a bullish area is quite there, but yes. it may get there tomorrow. I don't know, but right. your downside is limited. So when you start entering into a gap. I get, it. Volume, I get it. The, the volume's not yeah. going to increase after the gap. It's going to stay low or or, right. or, or even lower, especially on Fridays. Right. A lot of times Fridays are kind of dead, uh, yeah. volume-wise. Uh, so, you know, is today better than tomorrow? I don't know. Sometimes I got lucky and waited until on Fridays and picked out the lows. And sometimes I, uh, you know, had to chase after a trade because Friday was no, I'm with you. So, you know, I'm with you. You know, it's going to be interesting, you know, too, Tim. You know, the summer's over, so the volume might be a little bit bigger tomorrow. You know? I mean, this is everyone's back from, you know, Labor Day, a different ball game. So we'll see. But the volume's been light yeah. in the last couple of days. You know, so. Yeah, yeah, it's just kind of trying, but it's 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 it's, it's got enough clues or... Uh, yes, no, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get what you're saying. So I don't yeah. know. You know, right. maybe things change on the clothes. We'll have to wait and see. We got time sure. to go over another chart here. Oh yeah, big this time. Is a yeah, pretty good chart on uh, chart five. Okay, I have it. Uh, all right, this is, uh, I look at weird stuff. But anyhow, this is the middle window is a daily silver gold ratio, and I just used the ETF SLV yes. and GLD okay. for the silver gold ratio. Yeah, and I started looking at the, you know there's a couple of different ways you can use this chart. You can use the RSI, you know, gets if the RSI of the the uh, SVS ratio gets around 30 and turns up. It's the bottom. And yes. I, I missed the bottom. But also, I found out that uh, if it gets around, you know, the ratio gets around 0.05 to 0.115, which is that tan line or the tan shaded area going across the middle of the yes, chart. Yes, I see that. Yes. That is, yeah, that's where support is on that that's ratio. That's powerful. Yeah, you know, I can see that. If you, right. if you go powerful. back to you know the the COVID crash, it went way below it. But you know that was a crash. Nobody sure that was an right. anomaly. That was nobody was expecting that, and so that got pushed right. out of pushed out of the park. But right. all the other times, it was at a low. And right now, we're in that region right now. Um, yep. That uh, this is probably a support area on SLV gold. If it is, then this ratio should rally. And for ratio rallies, GDX rallies. That's right. how that works. Right. So, uh, um, so anyhow, even though gold's kind of you know it's pulled back, it's kind of dead. Um, the the GLD uh, the, the SLV GLD ratio suggests this is a support area, and we should see a bounce out of that. To help support that idea, let's go to chart six. Okay, I have so chart it. six. Yeah, it's just momentum indicator. It measures the bottom window. It just measures the up-down volume, uh, up down volume on a 50-day average. As long as this indicator stays above zero, we're plus uh, about plus 11 right now. Yeah. Then uh, the market's in an uptrend, and uh, it works pretty well. It, you know, it gets close to the highs. It's not a perfect indicator, but it's a good momentum indicator. So at least two indicators, even though the market's kind of dead. Uh, yes, it does suggest that the uptrend's still intact. We're not seeing internal weakness yet. So, yeah. and, um, and this has been a hard trade to stay in. <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah, it's really <laughs> choppy, but the trend's still yeah. up. So, I love it. Well, listen, Tim, this was fantastic. You have a great weekend, safe weekend, and we can't wait to talk to you on Tuesday. All right, see you then. All right, thanks a lot. Okay, man.